Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment on this video saying I subscribed. Let's get into it. During the recent meeting of the India-Russia Intergovernmental Commission on Military Technical Cooperation in New Delhi, the visiting Russian Defense Minister had expressed displeasure on India's decision to disqualify two Russian systems from the $1.6 billion Army program. The program calls for procurement of 104 systems with its package costing $1.6 billion, and the winner of the tender would have to provide full maintenance and technology transfer to Ordnance Factory Board. The Indian Army had declared South Korean company Hanwha Defense Systems as the only qualified company for the program, and both the Russian systems were not fully compliant during the trials. The proposed system should have a day and night camera functionality, and should be able to operate up to 50 kilometers on a single fuel tank, and should have a minimum operation endurance of 8 hours without refueling. The Indian Army has started a defense procurement process for purchasing new generation air defense systems, to replace the Swedish L-70, and the Russian ZU-23 systems that are currently in use by the Indian Army. The Army intends to procure approximately 938 systems, and it should have an effective range of at least 4,000 meters. As per the tender document, the Army would accord preference to Indian firms that have designed and developed the system indigenously, but will also consider procurement under the Buy and Make in India category, that involves local production of a foreign system. The Indian Army has given its sanction for the prototype development of maneuverable expendable aerial target. According to the Army, there is a need of suitable aerial target system, for providing realistic training during exercises, and the project has been placed under Make 2 category, to ensure that there is no delay in the project. According to media reports, all the arrangements were in place for the flight test of the Prolay system, but despite several attempts, the mission team had to postpone the test due to inclement weather conditions and rough sea. Collection of data of the first test is as much important as its design, and it is difficult to get the exact data in such climate conditions. According to defense sources, the test might take place on 23rd or 24th December. Hindustan Aeronautics intends to perform mass production of the light utility helicopter at its new helicopter manufacturing complex unit, and the assembly line would initially be able to produce around 30 helicopters per year, and the production would be ramped up to 60 helicopters per year in the next two to three years. Hindustan Aeronautics has an order for 187 light utility helicopters, including 126 for Indian Army, and 61 for the Indian Air Force. The head of defense of Adani Group has said, that manufacturing the Gripen fighter jet would require a strategic platform, and the company will decide the place for manufacturing based on the decision of the central government. He also informed, that the company has created capabilities for both Tier 1 and Tier 2 category supplies, and there are adequate opportunities in serving the domestic market, as well as emerging opportunities in the export markets. After Turkey and Pakistan signed the deal for the supply of T-129 helicopters for $1.5 billion, the U.S. administration has blocked the supply of T-800 turboshaft engines which was to power the helicopters, and the U.S. Department of Defense have denied the export license for the American parts. According to Turkish officials, France and Poland have emerged as other alternative manufacturers for supplying the engines. According to reports, France might refuse to be part of the program, as France is a strategic partner of India, and has co-developed engines which are equipped on India's light combat helicopter, while Poland itself relies on Western and Russian origin engines for its helicopters.